yeah, welcome. I hope you're enjoying this. What I'd love to know is um, your thoughts. Like, what do you think I need to expand on? What do you, uh, you know, where are you lost? Um, any kind of questions that you get. It, it's all just to improve the content of um, the book. And, you know, there will be always an updated version available. So um, if you've purchased this on Kindle, for example, you can just go and update. There is a setting in the Kindle app to update the book and you will get your latest version uh, with all the updates. So your questions will be answered. Basically, I'm committed to, to doing that. And it's really cool to co-create this, right? Because, you know, I am sitting here recording my vision um, and I want this book to help you to have the right vision uh, that you can build the visibility not, that not only sells, but supports you and your lifestyle. That's another secret meaning of the S, right? Visibility that supports, visibility that shines. <laughs> because it is about shining your light. It really is true. So we talked about building, what the elements are there, but now we're talking about marketing. So when we're talking about marketing, it is also a little bit, you know, it's about creating too. So it's a little bit of building as well. So whether, whether the build your castle is really is like, okay, there's a structure for my castle. Things will be here, here, and here, and here. Now what you're doing with your marketing is you're putting the bricks or the elements, you know. Um, as I mentioned, you know, sometimes you can create something uh, of a more significance. Like I wrote my book on marketing and human design, and it's almost like I, I just like created this beautiful entrance into my castle. So some of the activities or some of the things you're going to create will be of more beauty and significance and more visible and prominent. Uh, but every everything you do, it's like a brick that adds to the wall. And you know, to build a, a house or build a castle, you will need a lot of bricks. This is just natural thing. And I, I want you to think about this because as human beings, as adult human beings, we forget how long things take because we do not have that conscious memory when we had to learn how to sit <laughs> as babies or how to crawl or how to talk. It took us years to start talking, some longer than others. So we are here doing the same thing in a way. And so sometimes, you know, our, our brain just wants things now. So we get this shiny object syndrome and we jump into all these strategies that are saying, you know, get clients now in 90 days. Yeah, you might, you might, so I'm not saying they don't work at all, but they're not sustainable, these strategies. And also some things take longer and we need to be realistic and honest with, with ourselves. I am a huge ambassador for being radically honest with yourself or calling out the, the lies that our brain, you know, feeds us to stop us from taking action. So this is going to take time. Every time you create something is a brick. So marketing is literally creating those little parts and bricks. And um, and it's I already mentioned a couple of ways. And I'm I'm talking about from about this building this visibility that sells from my own personal experience. Um, and it's also very important when we're talking about what is this marketing style, Juliet, that you're practicing. Um, I would say that this is a, a classic example of attraction marketing. Uh, attraction marketing, in my understanding is based on uh, showing up, sharing and creating content that is in-depth, that is um, long form, that is, it's kind of like you're sharing relevant to what your ideal client needs topics. Like, I mean, I'm not showing up here, you know, um, talking about, you know, that I want to learn how to cook, I don't know, Thai green curry, right? because it's irrelevant to this topic. So I'm still talking about my expertise, but I'm but I'm showing up in a way that is uh, authentic to me and that is driven by something that I want to share in the realm of what my ideal clients are, you know, need, need support with, or not that they need to hear. I'm not overthinking everything I say from that prism, because how can I? You know, this is not going to be magnetic. I will start second, second guessing everything I have to say. But I just want to share with you what I see. And this is where I find that the magnetism really happens when you're showing up from yourself. So while I'm on this topic as well, this is where with, within marketing, the, the attraction marketing is people in your audience, like everybody can find you if they want to, right? They, there is a possibility. Obviously, you have to do your work. You have to create discoverable pieces of content. But provided they find you, 
That's where the self-identification happens with, within this attraction marketing uh, concept. So there is no cold calling. There's no go get them. This is like open to receive. And as someone with human design, completely open ego, will or heart center, whichever way you want to call it, um, I am not, I definitely am not designed to go get it, set targets, you know, launches, all that stuff just stresses out my nervous system and just paralyzes me. So attraction marketing is something that I found extremely effective for someone like me. But I also see how it can be effective for, for absolutely anyone who decides to do that, who doesn't want to hustle and doesn't want to do the outreach, right? So we are still reaching out, but we're reaching out by putting ourselves out there available to be discovered. And there are several ways to do that. One of the ways to do that is um, through creating long form uh, discoverable content. I'm going to use the word blogs on your website. So by blogging on your website and creating content around the specific topics within your area of expertise that are more relevant to what your clients are looking for. Or if you happen to have a niche that like say, for example, I, I, I happen to have a niche, human design is, is a system. So there's a lot of people looking for information about human design. How can you create content that in a way catches those who are looking for information, but offer them the insight into how you see things and what you see in things. So they will want more access to you because essentially this is what I sell as a mentor, right? It's a very, very important concept to understand what you're selling because your marketing depends on that, right? And how confidently you create content will depend on that when you really understand what happens in this process of decision-making to pay you for your gifts. So blogging is really important. Uh, I find that the most important uh, area to get your head around is uh, the titles. So when it comes to search engine optimization, this is another massive niche with uh, probably like 99% of information that is not that relevant to someone like you, um, a coach, an expert, solopreneur, because it's never going to work and it just requires too much, too much stuff to think about and then it becomes irrelevant, right? Uh, for example, like thinking about adding keywords in, into your blog articles and all that kind of stuff. I can simplify it for you and you can have it all here for free <laughs> in a way or for next to nothing. Um, here's the things that you need to understand. And it can take you just several minutes or maybe a couple of hours of uh, either researching or you can talk to me to understand or maybe you will just understand it now, now right here after I say this or you'll read it in the book. Um, you need to, um, to have keywords so words that somebody who is looking for support within this niche, like micro topic, I'm not even talking about your niche now, I'm talking about micro topics, right? What would they type into search to find the answer? That is a really, really huge thing because you can come, you can, you can be like, say, you can help people overcome limiting beliefs about money. But it's a very vague topic, right? And it's going to have so much competition because there's a lot of articles there, you know, with vague topics. By the way, uh, when you're talking about online publications, which is another convers conversation, we're going to talk about that. But say external publications, magazines, all those kind of big domain, big um, platforms, a lot of the uh, content that they produce have very generic um you know, generic names or, or uh, they cover generic topics. So if you, for example, create a piece that's called how to overcome limiting beliefs around money, there'll be so much, so many other pieces of content you have to compete with this. So, and, and you will just get drowned. You'll never have a chance to rank against those big sharks. But what you can do is you can think about uh, how do people who come to you, how do they phrase their specific questions? So think about the hooks, think about their everyday situations, think about the thoughts that annoying thoughts that they're in, in their heads. Think about those kind of, um, the ways that your clients talk to you, people who started working with you, what, what, where were they at the beginning? This is so cool. And just use those words, use their words. And 
uh, one of the very easy ways to check what people are Googling is to actually start typing something into Google and you will see the suggestions. And in the suggestions, it very clearly tells you what are the, like the suggestions are organized by um, the number of searches, right? So you can see already what, what are the most popular searches there. So you can either get inspired and call your article or a YouTube video because it just applies to anything to be discoverable. This is, I am teaching you here how to think about what keywords are in the title. Yeah, you can then put, you can just literally name your article like that or uh, you can tweak slightly, not too much. So it doesn't, you know, doesn't break that pattern. And, and fit it into your article. That improves your chances of being discoverable. How cool is that? That's super, super cool. So the blogging part is really important. And this is where I would put most of your efforts. Uh, you can do a little like trick of talking and then take a transcript and maybe clean it up and create articles out of that. It's still something that you have to say as long as you're showing up and you're you're sharing what you have to say and not what they need to hear, right? The only time when we're doing that research about what they do is how do they call it? What do they say the problem is? That is important because you want to be discovered on those that, that criteria and then you can share with them what you see. And the right people will hear you. They will reason, resonate with you. They will want more access to you, more support from you. So the YouTube is the same, uh, YouTube videos, um, you do not have to, to focus now, oh my God, I need to learn about everything about YouTube, how to make it on YouTube, not at all. You just need the same understanding of how to name your videos that are public and then just keep building your channel. Because if you, are, if you focus on micro topics, in the names of your videos even if you're talking about something generic but you you lead with that micro topic with that question annoying thought that's in their head right use that in a title you're getting a chance to be more discoverable in these niche searches and then you have less competition you know because even if you created a video and five people created a video and called it almost the same the people who resonate with you even by visually they will they will stick with you. They will click on you or if you're not even the first click, they will stick with you. Because the moment you start talking, you get into what you have to say, they get into you, right? So they'll start binging on you. So here's the trick then. Even if they come from YouTube, you want to bring them into your website. Um, so, so you always want to have your call to action. Please visit my website for more inspiration. Uh, visit my website. It's not always the call to action. Visit my website to, um, I don't know, order a blueprint, like in my case. It, you can, but also just encourage, encourage, encourage throughout the video for people to come to your website and then make sure that everything you do all these videos you have on your youtube channel that are publicly available are also available on your website and there's very simple ways to do that you know but um without any over overthinking but it's really really cool because then when i'm on your website i don't need to go back on youtube and then there's a risk that my brain will want entertainment from you know whatever suggestions there on the sidebar but i'm actually consuming you now so maybe i will watch more videos maybe there's a podcast and you know that's another way that's my next line what you can do in terms of marketing your uh, visibility your castle you know essentially you're marketing your website but why are you doing that is because on the website that's your big nurturing platform so of course everything you do on the outside you'd want people to come and get more of you in a concentrated manner so those who are ready to take the next step can take the next step those who are not ready to uh, take the next step maybe they can just at least they will know who you are right and then there's other ways that they can get connected to you and in that respect having your social media platforms are a good idea um freebies i am not so much you know you might have one or maybe you can have you know some sort of way that they get something that again they you experience they experience you in a way that you support uh, them we can discuss this you know later the another thing is a podcast and i just mentioned this again don't look at it as like oh i have to build a podcast no if you you can either record a video or 
have a conversation with someone, yeah, like not interview style, but discussion style, for example, and show up as an expert in that. Add your two cents. What is your vision? What is, you know, have discussions that will benefit your ideal audience. Your uh, guests, they don't have to be uh, a competition. Although I have had guests on my podcast that were from the, exactly the same niche because I know that those who resonate with me, they will come and work with me. And those who don't resonate with me, they probably will, you know, if, if they resonate more with my guests, be my guest. I'm happy to share. I know my people will come to me. So the next um, thing is with the podcast is again, this is a piece of audible content. The podcast platform, I personally, I am not a kind of person, maybe it's a generational thing, but I don't actually leisurely listen to podcasts. I listen to a specific podcast that I uh, might be researching, you know, an expert that I want to work with or I want to learn from, and then they have a podcast and I'll go and listen to their podcast. But I am not someone who has a podcasting app that I just go, oh, what podcasts are out there, right? So, but I still always have had a, a show that I started then repurposing as a podcast, maybe in around 2018 or 19, because I I am all about omnipresence. You know, the more landing pages you can have out there, and that's a really interesting, you know, concept. Let me just explain this to you very quickly. Every time you do something and you put a piece of content out there, I'm not talking about social media, even though it also has that. I am talking about like an article, a YouTube video, a podcast episode, whether you were a guest actually or not, you know, or you're a host. Every time there's going to be a landing page for that piece of content created somewhere. And sometimes if you're a guest on podcast, some people create landing pages on their website as well as on the podcasting platform where that podcast is. And here's an interesting thing, not just hosted, but distributed. Which means that if I create a podcast episode and I upload it into my platform, I have a distribution set up. It shows on my platform and then all the other platforms that I've set up distribution to. That creates not just one landing page on, that, on the platform where the podcast is hosted, but also five other landing pages that other uh, podcasting platforms have for this episode which will carry over the title that you have all those discoverable keywords in as well as the show notes with the link to your website so these big podcasting platforms say for example apple podcast has now links directing to your website remember i was talking about the google juice that is all feeding into that but then why all of these multiple landing pages are so important? Because, especially if you have your name in that, in the name of the podcast, as a guest you would, as a host, I highly recommend that you add your name to the name of your podcast. It's because when somebody is searching you by the name, all of these landing pages get, get indexed by search engines. So they all have their own listing. So that's how you start dominating searches. Everything you do outside and on your website, but everything you do, if you distribute it into multiple platforms, and especially it's easy to do with the podcast because there's no such thing as like duplicate um, content issue. And I wouldn't even worry about that if I were you, but it creates a, a landing page. And another trick that you can do in terms of omnipresence, and this is to do with your blog post, blog articles, is in the beginning when you are just trying to establish yourself, you can duplicate the articles that you write on your post and re and, and post them on uh, something more established like medium.com or Elephant Journal or other um, publications that allow uh, content that is not unique to this publication and at the end of this content if they allow like medium.com does you can add a link to your website again so you're driving traffic but not only that you're technically sending that backlink as well and you're giving that google juice so your website eventually your domain authority grows and your website becomes more discoverable you become more discoverable and this is what visibility that sells is about it's about you being discoverable by people who are looking actively making an effort to find solutions, to find the answers, to find the guidance and support.
those are the ones that we want as clients, right? You can write a book. You can write 55 books. That's another way to be discoverable. And again, all you have to know is the keywords. Name your book. Use keywords in the name or subtitle of your, you know, the smaller kind of longer name of your book that will bring in um, people because they're looking for this stuff. This is like strategic thinking. This is why you need a mentor, right? Sometimes you might not, you might overlook these details. And a mentor can say, hey, so why don't we add this? Because this is strategically what your ideal client would be looking for to find you. And I think that this is really important. A lot of times we, we get temp tempted with catchy names, right? And they mean nothing and they are not discoverable because nobody types this into search engines to find you. Like simple things. We don't think about it. That's why a mentor thinks about it. And of course, then the social media strategy. So yes, I have um, still my Facebook account and my Facebook account is where I very um, actively, I should say, when I feel like it, post and share. But I think that the core of uh, my Facebook activity or any other social media platform that I use, I, I choose not to use, uh, for example, Instagram for business for me, because that will require a lot of short-term, you know, focus and, and hassle and creating the graphics and recording the reels and doing, you know, the videos. And I just do not want to spend my time on it. It's my choice. You don't have to, because there's other ways. And I found the other way, but anywhere else I use automation and there's fantastic apps. In fact, I have an article on my website called how to save, um, how to save time and effort uh, on social media. I think it's called, I'm going to link it here. Um, and that is where I talk about the tools that I use that are different to just regular scheduling tools that also don't require hassle. Don't like, you can just like set up and forget in a way. And so the, the, the core of my social media visibility is actually built by something that I've created before. And that's really cool. And that's what helped me step away from my business for almost six months, you know, three months, completely no creation. And then I, you know, I'm, I'm referring to a passing of my second husband, Les, and that time. And that allowed me social media was still maintained. Nobody knew what's going on in my private life because I could just with a couple of clicks of a button, post on my personal profile on Facebook, even that's what I use, you know, of course, uh, because the personal profile on Facebook is a representation, virtual representation of me. Nobody looks at business pages. Those are like brochures somewhere there in the corner of the office, right? <laughs> but people want to interact with me. This is also where I use, it's a platform where I use for connecting to others, right? I don't send friend requests these days, I did before, and but people can send requests to me so they can continue being in my world and you know if I feel inspired and it's not really like an article worthy or something you know I will post it on Facebook this is my my platform some people use LinkedIn maybe it's just more uh, relevant to you and your audience then use LinkedIn um, you can have a platform where you are present and the rest can be just populated automatically there's also a couple of tricks in terms of discover discoverability to use social media for a longer pieces of discoverable content and uh, and that's the, the goal of all of this, and this is where we are marketing our castle, is that all these pieces are creating links that are bringing people and, and they're drawing the right people into the website where you're building this brick by brick, a bingeable platform, and you have the next step available. This is why we were talking about the funnel, the foot in the door offer, the next step that is available there that makes sense, that is monetized straight away. And this is why now... I'm kind of getting into part three, monetizing your castle.